hedge fund managers across the world are looking to allocate their funds in different asset classes in different markets and in different currencies so therefore they need to hedge their positions in case the positions are very risky and turn out to be potentially loss making for the hedge fund manager they use extensively as extensively derivative contracts both exchange traded derivative contracts as well as otc derivatives to hedge these positions and minimize the losses on account of them once we've often heard of simpler products like interest rate swaps where in the payer and the payee swap their cash flows more complex products like cdos that is collateralized debt obligations and mortgage backed securities have come into play since 2006 2007 causing the fall of many of the american banks in the year 2008 largely called as a global financial crisis this deemed warren buffett to call derivatives as financial weapons of mass destruction hello everybody i'm your learning partner sushila hariharan and today's video we're going to talk about otc derivatives or why otc derivatives have come into play in the entire marketplace at all first let's understand what are derivatives the broad definition given in most financial books are derivatives are contracts whose price is derived from the price of the underlying asset so as you can understand from the definition there is an underlying asset and there is a derivative contract so these are two separate trades the spot market trade and the derivative market trade the spot market trade typically comprises instruments like equities or bonds which are traded but settled on a rolling settlement what do i mean by rolling settlement rolling settlement means settlement that takes place on t plus 1 or t plus 2 days okay so every day the trade is rolled over to the next working day or to the two working days after the trade date it's rolled over for settlement purposes so this is the biggest difference between the spot market and the derivative market that is a settlement process that takes place at least from the point of view of the trade life cycle from the point of view of pricing the derivatives there are many other factors that come into consideration compared to pricing of the spot market asset but when you look at the settlement of the derivative instruments it will have a fixed settlement date okay there is no concept of t plus 1 t plus 2 etc so for example on uh, the national stock exchange in india all futures and options are settled on the last thursday of the uh, month right trading month so therefore every contract then will have to be settled before that date okay so that on that date that contract cannot be outstanding so this this concept of rolling settlement and fixed settlement is very important to understand the trade life cycle because when we are settling the tra- trade the derivative contracts will always settle on or before the settlement date okay the settlement date in exchange traded products is called as expiry in the case of otc products it is called as settlement uh date or value date the derivatives can also be of two types so first we saw the derivatives could be traded in, that we could have uh, financial assets that can be traded in the spot market and there are deriv- and there are derivatives that can be traded in the fno segment in the exchange but derivatives itself can be traded in two different uh segments which are exclusive to each other okay so you have etds okay listed derivatives also called as exchange traded derivatives or otc de- derivatives so we have etds that is exchange traded derivatives where there is centralized trading centralized clearing standardized products standardized settlement procedures etc so if you look at national stock exchange there are two segments the spot segment or the cash segment and the fno segment okay where futures and options are traded only in the fno segment so this centralized clearing centralized trading standardized products etc all result into a ease of transaction and ease of settlement so because everything is centralized and everything is standardized the methodology of calculation of multiple things including margins etc is very standardized amongst the exchange traded products on the other hand you go to the otc market the otc market is called as otc implying that it stands for otc that is over the counter unlike exchange 
traded products okay those that are traded on nse otc products are extremely decentralized okay the trading is decentralized there is no formal exchange which acts as an intermediary between the brokers or the buyers and the sellers okay so the otc market is where the traders directly interact with each other and therefore it's called as decentralized trading but given the the tremendous losses that banks suffered in 2008 it's now become mandatory for clearing and settlement to be done on a centralized basis so otc derivatives can be decentralized trading but in today's day and age all the settlements in most countries across the world whether it is the us markets the japanese markets the singapore markets the indian markets etc the clearing that takes place is centralized okay so we'll take a look at what we mean by centralized clearing when we talk about trade repositories and dtc in the upcoming slides otc market then why why is there a need for an otc market because the products in the otc market are very structured okay they are customized to meet the requirements of the counterparties so they are not at all standardized like etds they are structured and customized to meet the requirements of the counterparties so in an exchange we find a lot of inadequacies especially given that the products are only suited to a certain segment of people right otc derivatives cater to a completely different segment of people all right so the underlying phenomenon is because of the way the underlying asset also is traded all right so if i look at equities for example equities are largely traded on exchanges equities are also traded equity uh, derivatives like futures and options are also traded on the exchanges but you look at the foreign exchange market the foreign exchange market also almost all foreign exchange interbank large value deals are otc in nature and therefore the derivative market for that is also largely otc in nature but otc derivatives cater to the requirement of extremely high net you know high wealthy managers people who understand the risks involved in the derivative space who are willing to take that risk are willing to take long dated positions in high risk assets etc so otc derivatives are therefore the game for the big boys as they say because it largely implies the need for understanding the risk in this okay so because of the risks involved in otc derivatives several regulations have come into place in the last 14 years because of which the otc derivative markets has grown in size but also the regulatory space the reporting space etc has also increased in volumes let's take two scenarios the first scenario is as follows party a directly deals with party b okay this party a could be a investment bank and party b could be a corporate all right what did you notice over here simple there is no centralized trading at all this party a could have done another contract with party c party d party b could have done another contract with party e so the trading over here is completely decentralized because party a is directly dealing with party b such a kind of a trade is called as a bilateral trade okay where the two banks or one bank one corporate are directly interacting with each other let's take a look over here of the same party a is a buyer party b is a seller of the otc derivative or otc product what are the risks involved if you look at this picture of decentralized trading okay it automatically means that there is a very high level of credit risk involved okay credit risk also called as counterparty default risk that is the buyer pays the money but does not receive the goods the seller gives the goods but does not receive the payments so counterparty risk or default risk is potentially very high over here 
So when you directly deal with any other counterparty, the possibility that the transaction doesn't happen on a direct payment basis, okay, delivery versus payment basis is very high. And therefore, the counterparty risk or the default risk is very high. This was what happened even during the mortgage backed security scenario way back in 2007 2008, causing the global financial crisis and causing the downfall of many of the investment banks in the United States. Another scenario of OTC is a bank A deals with a dealer, okay, and the dealer has a back transaction with a bank B okay that means the dealer is making a transaction happen between bank A and bank B so over here even though the dealer is an intermediary the dealer is also a counterparty the dealer makes a commission from both the banks okay at different points of time depending upon the structure of the deal the entire OTC market is driven by dealers. Dealers are extremely swift, they are nimble, they are fast, they are quick, they are aware of the prices, they know what are the asset positions of different banks and they want them to trade so that they can make money. OTC derivatives could therefore be bilateral contracts or inter-dealer, uh, inter-broker dealer contracts like we just saw. The OTC derivatives are extremely customized products. OTC derivatives are very customized products. And because of this customization, it is not possible to have a standardized or a centralized trading. This customization results into multiple entities wanting to trade on those products. Because as you know, high risk, high risk is an anticipation of high return and therefore highly customized products result into a structure which can be offloaded or which can be contractually reversed only after a point of time. Since there is no centralized trading, price discovery is the biggest challenge in OTC derivatives. How do you come to know what is the price? Today you and I want to know the price of a particular security. We download any of the apps that are available. We look at the prices and we come to know what are the prices. But how do we come to know what are the price of the OTC derivatives in the United States market? How do I come to know what is the deal that has taken place between the broker and let's say an investment bank? The quotes are given by dealers on OTC bulletin board and the OTC BB has been provided by FINRA. FINRA and its activities have already been discussed in another video, the slide, the link of which has been shared in the comment section below. So suffice to say at this point of time, that because OTC is extremely structured, extremely customized to meet the requirements of the two counterparties, the counterparty risk could be high and therefore OTC derivatives have uh, gotten a stricter and a more stringent regulation base right now. Examples of OTC derivatives include interest rate swaps, forex contracts, credit derivatives like CDOs, CLNs, etc. as well as currency swaps. I will be uploading another video on the different types of credit derivatives very soon. Right now, it's important for us to understand what is the settlement process, who, what are the elements of the OTC derivative ecosystem. The first element is the dealers. Okay, The market is driven by dealers. Please note, I am using two separate words over here. Brokers trade on exchanges, dealers trade on OTC markets. Brokers are members of the exchange. They are allowed to place buy orders or sell orders on the stock market. But uh, dealers give two-way quotes. Okay? The dealer is an entity who is willing to buy and sell. Okay? They are called as market makers in markets like NASDAQ. But in most countries, they are called as dealers as well. Because they are willing to buy and sell a set of securities. Bringing about stricter and more controlled movement of OTC derivatives are the trade repositories also called as the TRs. The trade repository in any country is maintaining the records of all OTC derivatives. This is very important because unlike exchanges where there is an automatic flow of trades from the exchange to the regulator, 
in the otc market there is no such automatic flow of uh, information of the trades that are done therefore counterparties to the trade have to inform the trade repositories that they have concluded the deal the trade repositories then have to inform the regulator that the transactions have been done this comes under regulation eu number 648 by 2012 as part of the emir directives for transactions that have been conducted in the european union for uh, otc derivatives in the european union they are called as trade repositories or trs and in the U us these are called as sdrs or swap data repositories so the information that is stored by the swap data repositories or the trs is pushed from the counterparties into the tr then comes the role of the ccp now the ccp is an extremely important creation since 2008 because even though trading can be decentralized settlement has to be centralized the ccp stands for central clearing counterparty they are responsible for clearing and settlement of all otc derivatives okay so that the biggest risk that we saw earlier in the second or the third slide that is the risk of default risk counterparty risk is no longer there in the market okay ccp is not a trading platform okay unlike otc bb which is a trading platform uh, and a quotation platform ccp is not a trading platform it's only a clearing and settlement platform ccp guarantees the terms of the trade it ensures that both counterparties honor the trade okay with respect to each other in the us market the ccp is the dco called as the derivatives clearing organization and they are responsible for ensuring that all settlements of otc derivatives take place in a streamlined fashion with the right data flow from the counterparties to the trade to the trade repository to the ccp and then thereafter to the securities exchange commission thank you very much for watching this video if you like the content that i normally cover on global markets covering operations processes and settlements with a focus on hedge funds custody operations trade life cycle as well as otc derivatives please watch my videos because i want to give and share more such content with you all thank you